always lube your tools. No, I think we're all good, Ollie. Maybe some biscuits. Okay, cool. All right, I'll see you in 15. All right, cool. See you in a bit. Bye-bye. Right, Bye-bye. Hope you get some biscuits. The bits should be... We, well, they're not... <coughs> Hello, Bob Fleming here. <coughs> always, always make sure your tool's clean. Steady as she goes. I need some oil. Rust busters. <laughs> I deserve some after the book you up in through. Like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> over. <laughs> Such a. <laughs> Just loading up, we're rolling now. Uh, so. Rolling, 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 rolling. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to Clean Classics. This time we're looking at the prep and paint on the Series 2A chassis. It's an older Galv chassis, so we're uh, hitting that with some Buzzwell Galvin 1. We're also rebuilding the axles for that build. Once all that's done, it's quite exciting because we'll be getting to the point we can get it as a, as a rolling chassis. So yeah, really excited to see it all taking shape. So as you can see, we've got the, got the half shafts out of the front axle for the 2A build and both of the front half shafts um, have got, got some damage to them. So you can see here, this, this one, which was the offside front half shaft, has got quite a lot of wear to the splines where it goes into the drive member. Uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna replace that. And then also, the other side, the end has snapped off. There's no longer a hole through for the split pin to hold the castellated nut on the end of the shaft. So although the splines aren't worn, we can't, we can't reuse that. So we've sourced new new half shafts. So they're all ready to go in. And then we're looking at, so this is the near side, the long, the long front drive shaft. And as you can see here, this uh, this this half shaft's had a bit of a, a bit of a muller in, in a previous life by a previous owner, probably trying to change this this inner race of the of the inner swivel bearing. Um, so, so yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna take all this off. We've got a new compression collar because these are a bit worn where the seal sits. So new in a race for the bearings which we're replacing anyway in the back of the swivel housing. And we'll clean up this collar and clean up this this half shaft. And we'll get it put together with a new UJ, that new bit, and it should look like this. And as I say, I'm Blue Peter. Here's one I prepared earlier. So we're getting all the other bits for the front axle prepped, ready to go back together. So new swivel balls, and I fitted those with the, the outer race of the bottom swivel bearing and the Ralco bush in the top. And I've also fitted the new um, semi-floating bearing in the back of the swivel ball that supports the, the drive shaft. So now I've got to uh, take out the inner collar of the, of the semi-floating semi -floating bearing and that is going to go onto the half shaft and and the compression collar is going to go on behind it to hold it all together so the half shafts all cleaned up where a previous owner had had a bit of a go at it and uh, the collars all cleaned up ready to go so we're now ready to push the inner the inner inner race of the of the uh of the drive shaft support bearing onto the onto the half shaft when you're changing these bearings some people don't bother changing that inner that in, that in a race, and you, you've got to you've got to do it. You got to. I know they're they're a bit of a pain with the compression collar, um, but you've got to you've got to do it. There's no point putting a new bearing in with an old with an old in a race in it. So the bearing in a race and, and the compression collar, which also forms the face for the seal in the end of the axle tube, they're a, they're a compression fit on the on the half shaft. So I normally just press them on one at a time just to make sure there's not a problem with either of them. And if anything goes tight, you haven't got two collars stuck on the shaft that you've got to then try and get back off. And I normally use an old bearing um, and just slit it through with a slip disc and it, so, that it, so that it comes back off easily and then use that to, to press the new collars on. The inner, inner bearing race is already on, so we're just gonna press the compression collar on now. So we'll get it set up in the press.
excuse the wafty circlet pliers, but that was Johnny's secret UJ changing method. And uh, yeah, it's all done. Go a while to go home. That's why I'm still here. What's the time? <laughs> so last couple of days I've been prepping this chassis and um, the axle casings which you should see should see in a minute um, and I'm using an epoxy primer from Rust Busters which uh, is is great for for applying to galvanized and bare steel materials and um, it just it just seals it for the future so hopefully this should be okay and any surface rust won't be blooming anytime soon talk to me goose right the other day alfie was looking over the chassis and cleaning it up and uh, while he was doing that just under here he uh, he found a little hole through the galve so um, we decided to uh, inspect it a little bit further the hole got bigger and bigger and we ended up with that so what we've done is we've cut out about 200 mil and then took the, took the sheet back in um, and then rust converted everything else inside and then um, wax oiled it inside as well. So it's future proofed. So we shouldn't be seeing any problems from this, even though it's not galvanized. On the chassis rail here, we've got a bit of a low point here and what we think's happened is water's gathered in here at some point and it's been on, on a hill in a hedge or something um, for a long time and water's sat in the chassis rail and just started delaminating it and it's got underneath the galve, started delaminating it and it's just come through. And pretty much here, the only thing that was left was the galve. That was it. This is the 2A chassis. Uh, it's a galvanized chassis and this week we've just been going over it with um, scraping off all of the crud, all of the under seal that's like been residue. Then we've been degreasing it with a panel wipe just to prep it for paint. And then anything that's had a, a like a, a thin layer of galve or something that's needed a bit more protection has had two coats of epoxy primer on there. Um, and it's just about to be painted now. Here we are, we've, um, we, we've just finished prepping the chassis. Alfie's been working away, getting the under seal off and any other grime. Um, and he's just finished panel wiping it and keying it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some of the Buzzworld Galvin one on and it's gonna go on really nice. <laughs> Right, so here we are. Chassis is almost painted, and uh, I've just got onto the rear cross member, trying to make it look really good, which I will, because I'm brilliant at what I do. And um, I'm just going around the rear cross member with a brush, just getting all the seams, and then I'll attack it with the uh, roller. Got a brand new roller on, bit of Buzzworld, Galvin one. We're just about to paint the rear cross member. So the rest of the chassis had a really thick paint, really thick coat of paint, I mean. And uh, I'm doing the same on the rear cross member. The rest of the chassis actually self-leveled off really nicely. So I'm going for the same method. And hopefully it will come out looking nice and flat.
Fred's, Fred's been busy cleaning up and painting all the bits for the Series 2A axle builds. So differentials are all, are all painted, um, axle casings are all painted, swivel housings and arms are all ready to go. And I'm just cleaning everything up and sorting out everything ready to go back together. We've got a few little issues. As you can see, someone's, someone's changed the studs at some point in the tops of the swivel housings. A bit of a mismatch of, of studs. They're all, they're all different lengths and all in, all in different places. So I'm gonna, I'll get on and sort that out, make sure they're all, they're all right before it all goes back together. We're gonna drop the, we're gonna clean this axle casing up and drop the diff in, in a bit. And we're also gonna change the diff pinion seal and give that, give that a clean up. And then we can bolt some swivel balls to this front axle and start building up the swivel houses. This is the rear axle. Diff's been cleaned and inspected and I've fitted it back in with a new gasket. I've also changed the diff pinion seal, inspected all of that. Uh, just waiting for Fred to finish painting the last few bits for this. We've got the brake back plates there. He's just cleaning up the stub axles and stuff, ready to, ready to go back on. The diff's been cleaned and inspected, and refitted with a new gasket and, and a new diff pinion seal in here. Um, I use this little tool that I knocked up on the lathe for that job, just so you can you can get the double lip seal in without without damaging it. So it so the, the inner lip sits in that in that rebate in the in the in the tool, and you don't need to remove the pinion shaft to be able to to put the new seal in nice and nice and square and and flat. Um, when you when you're ordering seals, I always try and go for one. They have a with a with a G at the end of the part number that denotes that it's genuine or of OEM quality. It's not worth scrimping on things like pinion seals and stuff. You, you can buy one for a couple of quid, but if it if it only lasts five minutes, you're doing the job again. So it's just not worth it's just not worth cutting corners like that. inspected and cleaned and I've just put it back in with a new gasket. We're now just going to change all of the all of the axle casing seals. So diff pinion seal, this is the old one, this is out of the other, this is out of the other axle actually, um, but it's the old metal and leather type seal. Uh, but they they're renowned for, for leaking. So we replace these with a with a modern double lip rubber seal of a good quality. So as you can see this one has already been replaced with a rubber seal. Um, so we'll We'll pop, pop that out, just like that. And uh, yeah, as you can see, it's pretty, uh, it's in pretty poor order. So I'll just crack on and get it all cleaned up, inspect the pinion bearing, make sure that's all good. And then I'll put a new seal in it and put it all back together. I'm just gonna make sure it goes in nice and even. seal to sit against so you've just got to make sure it's tapped all the way in and it sits nicely and squarely against that against that reference as well when you're, when you're tapping it in you obviously want to make sure your input is all nice and clean and doesn't have any any grooves or corrosion on the seal face make sure that's all nice and clean and then give it a little smear of oil on the face to make it slide past the new seal nice and easy. And uh, that'll be that done. Thanks for Always lube your tool. We had word from the laser cutter guys that uh, all our bits are laser cut for the series one, so they're just they're just folding them in the next couple of days. So next time you join us, we should also have a load of metal work for the series one, so we should be doing a load of fab work on that. So 
should be loads of loads of content for you guys so uh, like and subscribe thanks for joining us for another episode hopefully next time you join us the front and rear axle should be fully rebuilt and they should be back underneath the chassis and we should have a rolling chassis to look at and then we can get on with steering components and we'll be on with bulkhead repairs next time you join us as well.